if you follow me or if you have a chance to listen to my videos you might see that sometimes I go to the same passages and the reason is because number one in the letters of Romans to Philemon we have the doctrine for us as members of the body of Christ but also because we need to allow the Spirit of God and the Word of God to work the renewing of the spirit of our mind and that happens only with the Word of God we need to face a reality we live in a terrible world if we listen to the news or even if we access alternative sources of news maybe on, on YouTube or Rambo or uh, you know various platforms Instagram TikTok there is a tremendous amount of confusion yeah and sometimes instead of being encouraged or edified we might even get discouraged and confused because you see the difference with whatever as people say they say whoever they are and what God wrote down in his word is the difference between light and darkness these are the pure words of God and that's why the enemy would do anything to keep us engaged occupied busy with anything else normally of temporary nature instead of considering the glorious truth uh, of the word of truth of the word of God now after this premise second Corinthians chapter 4 verse 1 the Apostle Paul writing therefore according to what he said in chapter 3 at the end of chapter 3 okay so let's go and see what he said but we all with open face beholding as in a glass the glory of the Lord are changed into the same image from glory to glory even as by the Spirit of the Lord you see and this point it is therefore makes perfect sense therefore the, the, for what I know uh, the, the chapters in the division and the verses have been added later you know uh, originally scripture was a continuum you didn't have uh, this division but those has been done to help us to find out the verse the subject the argument you want to talk about therefore seeing we have this ministry one ministry the ministry to preach the word of truth and the word of reconciliation Paul says in 2nd Corinthians chapter 5 later he says that we are all now ministers of reconciliation with the word of reconciliation we are indeed ambassadors for Christ therefore seeing we have this ministry as we have received mercy we faint not very important to remind ourselves all the time if now we're believers if we now can preach because we are saved and sealed by grace it is because it's by grace we receive just like Paul mercy and grace Paul said that whatever he did when he was persecuting the disciples of the Lord he did it ignorantly in unbelief but he received mercy is the first of the pattern is the first in the, in the body of Christ because the body of Christ begins with him to have received mercy and grace grace and mercy and in particular the ministry of preaching Christ according to the revelation of the mystery which was hidden God for ages and generation knowing the scriptures the mystery was hidden God but now it's been revealed to his saints to all the apostles and prophets by the spirit therefore seeing we have this ministry Paul says as we have received mercy we faint not 
And in our interaction, our interactions with others, with people that are in denominations, the people that uh, are so incredibly convinced of being the right because they went through some religious rituals or they participate regularly to religious meetings, they think they're okay. We need to be very cautious. <laughs> I speak this to myself first because my nature is very tempestuous, aggressive, but you know, we receive mercy, let's give mercy. We receive grace, let's give grace. At the same time, we need to speak the truth in love. We cannot compromise truth because of love, but this truth, we have to give it out in love, and that's the love of Christ. God does, is not doing this because he wants to have some churches that believe in him. The will of God in this dispensation of grace, he will have all men to be saved and to come to the knowledge of the truth. That's why Christ came to save sinners. He didn't come to establish another religion. There was already the Jews' religion, which anyway had become so corrupt that Christ, being God in the flesh, among his own people, he was a Jew, you know, he was born uh, under the law. He was God in the flesh, but as a man, he was of the tribe of Judah. You go and see the genealogy of Christ in the in the Gospels. You say, why this genealogy? To prove the Christ that they were talking about was not somebody that just came out out of the blue, like often happens with those so-called self-proclaimed prophets. He was indeed the prophet that Moses prophesied. He was indeed in that ministry the king of Israel, the high priest, the shepherd, the Lamb of God. But we know now, we know him according to the revelation of the mystery. We don't know him according to the flesh. That's why, praise God, he gave to Paul revelations, visions of revelation, revelations that we can read. And that's why Paul is encouraging us, say, as we receive mercy, we faint not. And who of us speaking the tr in truth, in, in honesty, doesn't feel often, well, I want to give up. It doesn't matter how many times there are people that this grace is the gospel of grace, that they need to do nothing in terms of works, their own works, but believe and receive what Christ has accomplished and give all the glory and praise and thanksgiving to him and to him alone. Because we don't contribute to our salvation in any way or shape or form. We're the sinners, Christ the Savior, right? And so sometimes, you know, you say this once, twice, three, in person, on posts, on YouTube, and there you go, you can people that say, yeah, but we need to be baptized in water. Yes, we have to confess our sins. Yes, we have to repent. Others say, oh yeah, oh yeah, they say. So you telling me that without you being righteous, God saves you? Well, the problem is that we're not righteous to start with. And righteousness is by imputation. When we believe the gospel of grace, when we receive the operation of God, the salvation of our souls, then righteousness is imputed to us. Go and read Romans 4. Like with Abraham. Abraham became Abraham when he believed in God that that was imputed to him for righteousness. And the same happens to us if we believe on him that raised Jesus Christ from the Lord, from the dead, sorry. Jesus Christ, our Lord from the dead, who was delivered for our fences, fences, transgressions, sins, it was risen again for our justification, Romans 4, 5, 25. 
I've eaten a nice meal, but it looks like I'm gonna eat some words. <laughs> it is 2.47 of the 6th of March 2024 in Western Australia, okay? But every ounce the hidden thing of dishonesty. Okay, that's a choice, okay? Paul says we have renounced. Nothing to do with that. What? The hidden things of dishonesty. Our flesh like to do things hidden. You know, so they don't see us that we're doing this. We have an image that we project to people. A mask. Boom. Here I am. The holy man of God. Call me pastor. Call me reverend. <laughs> Bishop. What about Cardinal Monsignor? I'm holy. 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 In fact, I've got many holes. <laughs> There are many secret societies, organizations. We are not. Freemasons, not only that, the Illuminati, uh, Bilberg, all, all these people do things hidden. They plot. They plot the destruction of mankind to their own benefit, serving the little fallen nasty god satan the post says we have renounced the hidden things of dishonesty as children of light bearing this light we have renounced but the light of the gospel the, the light of the word of god not the light of prometheus masonic uh, symbol the one that steals the light, fire from the gods, brings to mankind to enlighten them, you know. Junk. Huh. No walking in craftiness. Oh, craftiness makes me, I don't know, think of foxes. Very crafty, very astute. Well, the serpent was the most subtle animal who was in the garden always ready to deceive always scheming to deceive the creation of god mankind have renounced the hidden things of dishonesty no walking in craftiness renouncing no walking nor handling the word of god Deceitfully. Whoa. This is the word of God. This book is there for anyone to take, open, read, study. And some people, they use it, some people. <laughs> Too generous. Deceitfully. What about, you know, the organizations? They all have somebody who started it, a prophet. Think of the Pentecostal with that guy that's Par Paranam or whatever it's called. The your witness with Rutherford, was it? All these funny names. I'm Italian. I <laughs> they, 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 what's the name? The Mormon with Joseph Smith or whatever, original name. Joe Smith? <laughs> Anybody there? who received, you know, visions. And they create this a fantastic system. They have churches, buildings, churches, buildings. What about all my Catholic church? They have popes and Christ didn't make any pope. And the pope is a little Christ on earth. It's the vicar of Christ. Oh man, you know, <laughs> sick stuff. <laughs> and they use uh, the, the, the word of God they handle it, handle it deceitfully, with deceit, for, to deceive you, to put you under their control. Paul says, we are not dominators of your faith, we are helpers of your joy, because by faith ye, ye stand. 
If you are saved and see and you believe the gospel, the grace of God, you stand. He says in 1 Corinthians 15, 1 to 4, he said, by which you also used, you stand, you know. If you keep in memory what I preached unto you, unless you are you have believed in vain. Hmm. You are saved, you stand. But these people, they do this. They didn't renounce hidden things of dishonesty. They walk in craftiness. And they handle the word of God deceitfully. Well, who's these people? Anyone, anyone, consciously or, un or without even realizing it, who has not believed the simple but powerful, glorious gospel of Christ, which is the power of God unto salvation for everyone who believes, the Jew first and also the Greek, man or woman, Jew or Gentile, bond or free, anyone, anywhere, on this earth of God can be saved and sealed eternally without possibility of going back into Adam the moment they believe this gospel. But this, <laughs> they don't like this because in the gospel of grace, the preaching the gospel of grace, there is no possibility to control people <laughs> And to siphon money from them, you know. <laughs> Who's gonna pay? You know the bills. We, we need to, you. We need to preach tithing. Now some people say, but why you always? Because I had this pastor. I'm not saying his name is dead. Okay. So, for respect, he's dead. He used to come to me and say, Brother Roberto, when I was Pentecost, when I was. Please help me to preach, you know, tithing to these people of yours, because Italians, you know, I'm Italian. In this community, there were many church goer that were Italian. Conservatives, all people of, the, of Italy, they came here in the 50s, in the 40s, in the 50s, in the 60s, in Australia. And there were people that were very prudent with their money, you know. But, yeah. Pastor said, they don't want to pay their tithe, you know, they're very stingy. And me, in my ignorance, you know, to please him, you see, when you want to be a man pleaser, I would go and study, put all together this study, especially Malachi 3. You're robbing God, you know. I'm ashamed, but I was ignorant. Also, these kind of sins are forgiven. Praise be to God for Christ and his cross. Paul says, we renounce the hidden things of dishonesty, no working in craftiness, no handling the word of God. Is it. Go and tell this to all denominations. And they say, what do you mean? What do you mean? So you don't, you don't practice what the Baptists have. Heretic. No, you are heretic. Why? Because you give power to the water to save a soul, to wash away the sins. You want the people identified with the 12 tribes when we are redeemed through the blood of Christ. No water, thank you very much. And there is not a drop of water in the baptism of rather by the Spirit when you believe the gospel of grace. Actually, we are baptized, identified, for the sake of identification, with the death of Christ. How nice, Roberto. All of a sudden, you are sending all these denominations into a department called the denomination of the ignorant brethren. Well, if they ignorant for real, they can fix about studying. But if they're deceivers, they will not study. Or if they know that, they can see, they say, we don't preach this. So that's why, that's why they use all sorts of Bibles, you know, here. I, I, I downloaded here to do some, and there are much more, there are more than 2,000. Corrupt, 
corrupt Bibles, <laughs> deceitful Bibles, because they are not the pure words of God preserved in this King James Bible. No, you know, I mean, all denominations baptize people. The Roman Catholic Lutheran and the Orthodox they baptize little children. Baptized. They sprinkle a bit of water and say magical formula. I grew up in Italy, eh, born and raised Roman Catholic, when they still used to do the, the, the mass, the rites in Latin. And the majority of people knew nothing of Latin. It's just repeat, et cum spiritu tu, oh, amen, dominus vobiscum, which means the Lord be with you. And the answer of the crowd, et cum spiritu tu, oh, people say that, they don't know, with your spirit too, okay, let's say. Eat the mess, go, the mess, the mass, the mess <laughs> is over. <laughs> and confess my sins to the jack in the box, this man. Dressed in black because is Jesus still dead somewhere? No reason. So is it black is the color like this? <laughs> Here you are moaning the dead. There's sick stuff, you know, and you want to know my sins. Tell me my songs behind this net in the secret of the confession. They even created this uh, dogma that. Uh, once you confess to the priest, he, he has the, the, the duty not to tell anybody what you told him, except the, the will. <laughs> so everybody knows who you are. Anyway, ignorance, ignorance, ignorance. Now we need to, have to, to follow this instruction here by renouncing the thing, things, dishonesty. Let's not work in craftiness and nor even handling the word of God deceitfully, but by manifestation of the truth, commanding ourselves to every man's conscience in the sight of God. Manifestation of the truth. I love this expression here. Manifestation of the truth. It's the truth that makes you free. And who is the truth? Jesus himself is the truth. God the Father is the truth. The Holy Ghost is the truth. And the Bible is the word of truth. Five times is written word of truth. Five times. Like, uh, I don't know, for some reason, my hand disappears. Five times. I love this. He died for our sins, was buried, rose again the third day for our justification. 1 Corinthians 15, 1, 4, Romans 4, 25. That's my motto, praise the Lord. Commanding ourselves to every man's conscience in the sight of God. Like here we are, we command ourselves, we are preaching the truth. You reject it as your choice. But the truth we are preaching and nothing else, nothing more, nothing less. But what truth? Uh, the truth of the word of God rightly divided. But then Paul says, but if our gospel be hid, it is hid to them that are lost. Why does he say our gospel? Oh, because it's together with Peter, James, and John. No. No, 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 no. This is Second Corinthians. At the beginning, Paul is Poor Apostle Jesus Christ by the will of God and Timothy. So if there are two people here, Paul and Timothy, so says our gospel. But when he's by himself, he says my gospel. Can you prove this? Well, yes, I can. Our gospel. According to what I said, should be present three times. Let's have a look. But I have not obeyed the gospel for Isaiah says, Lord, who has believed our report? That's our report. No, no, no. Aha. Uh -huh. 
2 Corinthians chapter 3. But if our gospel be hid, is it to them that are lost? 2 Corinthians 10, 14. For we stretch not ourselves beyond our measure. And then, huh? No. To preach the gospel, huh? For our gospel, second time, came not unto you in word only, but also in power and in the Holy Ghost and in much assurance. Okay. Our brother, because here, it goes by our gospel. So our gospel three times. My gospel, you see, I got to fix this. Search for the exact phrase, otherwise, you get that. My gospel, my gospel, my gospel. Three verse found three matches. That's why. Same thing is our gospel searching only search for the exact exact phrase it should be three times our gospel our gospel our three verse one. <laughs> hey praise God yeah sometimes you also you got to search properly hmm but so which is our gospel Paul given that it's not the gospel of Peter and James and John. Well, it is the gospel of grace. Gospel of the grace of God. Acts 20, verse 24. But none of these things move me, neither count my life dear unto myself, so I might finish my course with joy and the ministry which I have received the Lord Jesus to testify the gospel of the grace of God. Now, this expression, the gospel of the grace of God, is found once. That's enough. <laughs> it's defined really good. It's the gospel of the grace of God. Then, in Romans 1, in verse 16 for I'm not ashamed of the gospel of Christ for it is the power of God unto salvation to everyone that believes to the Jew first and also the Greek now you see the precise pure words of God reserve gospel of Christ he said I'm not ashamed of the gospel of Christ which is different that the gospel that Jesus Christ was preaching to his earthly people when he was sent only to them, the lost sheep of the house of Israel, and so that the twelve. And guess what? We're going to look this verse in other Bibles. And they're going to... You're going to find the gospel. Not of Christ. It's not defined. So at this point, <laughs> you can insert any gospel you want. Anyone that according to your pleasure. For I'm not ashamed of the gospel. Comma. Hey, what is with, oh Christ? Don't be so finicky. Do you say finicky in English? What is this? The Passion Translation. I refuse to be ashamed of sharing the wonderful message of God's liberating power unleashed in us through Christ. What is this? <laughs> For I'm thrilled to preach that everyone who believes is saved. He's thrilled. Net. We've been there. This is the like some English Bible, for I'm not ashamed of the gospel. Yes, be. For I'm not ashamed of the gospel. Yeah. For I'm not ashamed of the gospel of Christ. Those guys, they're corrupt. 
the word of God, they handling deceitfully, they have an agenda just to grab you and make of you a proselyte, a member of their organization. That's why they want to baptize you there and they want you to tie there and bring offerings there. In fact, they say, yeah, you can be generous, but be careful who you give the money to. Like, give it to me, you know. Some people invented that if you put the seed of money, the seed is the word of God, but that into my ministry, God's going to bless you. Oh, yeah, because I'm special. Very special. So we're talking about the gospel. Which gospel? My gospel. The gospel of Christ. And, of course, the classic that I didn't know for 40 years. <laughs> But of a brother, I declare unto you the gospel which I preached unto you, which also ye have received wherein you stand, by which also ye are saved. If ye keep in memory what I preached unto you, unless you believe in vain. For I deliver unto you first of all that which I also received, how the Christ died for our sins according to the scriptures. What is water baptism here? That you need to repent and be baptized in water, confessing your sins. Is not. And they was buried. And they rose again the third day according to the scriptures. That's it. There you go. But if our gospel be hid, it is it to them that are lost. In whom? The God of this world. the web for that. Just tap that search Ooh. chip below. So it is, I was Google. <laughs> oh, in my, in my phone, heard my voice and started to give me another answer. Oh, man. But if our gospel be it is it to them that are lost, in whom the God of this world. Who is the God of this world? People say, God is sovereign. The Calvinists love this expression. You can't find this word sovereign in the King James Bible, so reject it. But anyway, they think that God is running this system. <clears throat> if this is the case, we're done. <laughs> no, 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 no. <clears throat> the God of this world. Did you notice? Did you notice the low case G? Well, you can't say this, brother. Well, this guy tempted even Christ when he came to Israel. In the temptation of Christ, he said, he took him on a very high mountain, and in a moment of time, he showed all the kingdoms of the earth. And he say, and he said, if you worship me, I can give this to you. They, they, I control it. You know. I can give whatever I want. <laughs> oh, wow, interesting. That's why those guys, they worship Satan, Baphomet, uh, the devil, the angel of the light. <laughs> He's the god of this world. They're also called the prince of the power of the air, the spirit that now works in the children of disobedience. The prince of the power of the air. In whom the god of this world has blinded the minds of them which believe not. Ah, that's why their minds are blinded. You give them this glorious gospel. Simple, simple, powerful, because it's the gospel of Christ. And they don't believe it. No, 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 no. I have to repent. And they think repenting means confess his sins. But the first one to repent was God once in the Bible. In Genesis, God repented. Was God a sinner? No. Repentance means change of mind, metanoia. They say, no, you can't just be saved, but simply believe in the death, the resurrection. Come on now. That's called cheap grace. Cheap grace. For what I know and understand, Christ has to shed his precious blood to the very last drop to atone for my sins, your sins, and the sins of everybody. You call it cheap? Go and wash your mouth with some acid. <laughs> Cleanse it. Don't say these kind of things, you know. 
The grace of God is not cheap. It's very expensive. But Christ paid the price. No, you know me. We can't contribute in any way, in any way, shape or form to the salvation of our soul. Do you understand this? Not before and not after. You don't save yourself. God saves you when you believe this gospel. You don't keep yourself saved by doing or not doing anything. Hate me if you want. But God, in his mercy, grace, wisdom, compassion, provision, when you believe this gospel, he doesn't only save you, he seals you with the Holy Spirit of promise. The Holy Spirit of promise is the earnest, the guarantee of our inheritance until the redemption of the perishable possession unto the praise of his glory. I insist and persist. We go in the book of Ephesians and we go in book in chapter one. It says that we should be to the praise of his glory, first Ephesians 1, 12 and 13, who first trusted in Christ, in whom you also trusted, the Ephesians, after you heard the word of truth, the gospel of your salvation, first Corinthians 15, 1 to 4, in whom also, after you believed, ye were sealed with that Holy Spirit of promise, which is the earnest of our inheritance until the redemption of the first possession unto the praise of his glory. It's unto the praise of his glory because you have no part whatsoever. You are on the receiving end. You are very blessed, but you don't even realize how blessed you are. You realize maybe later, but Christ has done it all. No. Yes, you believe it, and you also you get sealed. So once you're sealed, you're locked in, in Christ, praise God. It takes you out of Adam and puts you into Christ. And just like when you were in Adam, you cannot move into Christ by your volition, operation of religious rituals of all sort, what a baptism, speaking in tongues, rolling yourself on the floor, giving all your money to the poor, whatever. Stop in seeing me impossible. But anyway, the same way it seals you so that you cannot come out of, of, of Christ and go back into Adam. That old man, you put him off. He's been crucified. Crucified with Christ. It's out of the way. The solution of God is crucify the flesh. You don't crucify your flesh. Oh, Pick up your cross daily. There is a guy that travels the world with this wooden cross. My, that's heavy stuff, man. You're not Jesus, man. No one is. What do you want to do? Show off to the world that you're such a holy man. I renounce. Questo mondo lasciato per sempre. Perseguire soltanto Gesù. I remember this song, you know, when I was Pentecostal in Italy. So glorification, exaltation of your own flesh, which actually stings. Our righteousness, filthy rags. We haven't got any righteousness in ourselves. We can't destroy it <laughs> to go. He, he saves us. You know what he does? He does. New creature. <laughs> Not born again. Or well, you want to be born again. You are stinking. You're not part of the 12 tribes. You are now a member in particular of the body of Christ. Every time I go into this, I get these sick caps. You, know? <laughs> you are now a new creature. 2 Corinthians 5, 17. 
Therefore, you should read the verse before. Wherefore, well, henceforth know we no man after the flesh. Yeah, though we have known Christ after the flesh, yet now henceforth know him no more. Therefore, if any man be in Christ, is a new creature, not born again. All things are passed away. Behold, all things have become new. Wow! Yes. But that's the chapter before, after this one we will now. In whom the God of this world has blinded the minds of them which believe not, lest the light of the glorious gospel of Christ, ah, Romans 1, 16, and it's called here, the glorious gospel of Christ. It's the glory of God. Who is the image of God? There you have. God is on that cross, not just a man, the God man. Now, who dies is the man. God cannot die. But his death is powerful to save you, me, and to grant us the atonement, the forgiveness of sin, the acceptance in God, in Christ, because it was God doing it. Mmm, so much truth all together. You got set seat belt, are you? <laughs> so much information. Whom the God of this world has blinded the minds of them which believe not. My exhortation, brotherly, friendly exhortation, please believe now. Don't wait. Don't procrastinate. The procrastination club is meeting tomorrow. <laughs> Every day. Lest the light of the glorious gospel of Christ, who is the image of God, should shine unto them. Paul, for we preach not ourselves, but Christ Jesus the Lord. You see? People say, oh, you follow Paul, you are worshipping Paul. I follow Jesus, they say, you know. Nobody can follow Jesus. He's at the right hand of the Father in heaven, sitting on the right hand of the Father of the glory. The majesty and I praise the Lord Almighty, 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 praise Him. I'm like this, I need to praise God all the time, because I'm so holy. For we preach not ourselves. What you want to preach? What do I preach myself? Paul says, look at me, look at me. No, he says, hey, I'm here bringing the gospel of Christ. <whistles> That's the one you got to look at. But Christ Jesus, the Lord. And now comes this guy who's big, you know, he's got a big Calvinistic assembly, you know, MacArthur say. With lordship salvation and still, in, unless you make Jesus Lord of your life, you cannot be saved. Ah, that's nice. How do I do that? I dress all magic paraments, you know, all magic cross. I have a big cross here, big hat, and say, Jesus, I make you Lord of my life. What an incredible authority you got. Now, my dear friend, is already Lord. With or without me, you, us, for we preach not ourselves by Christ Jesus the Lord and ourselves your servants for Jesus' sake. For God, who commanded the light to shine out of darkness, when? Genesis. But no, in Genesis, that's mythical. There was a big bang, don't you know? <laughs> yeah, I know, in the head of people that don't believe. For God, who commanded the light to shine out of darkness, let that be light. Darkness gone, light shining, a shine in your hearts, in our hearts. To give the light of the knowledge of the glory of God in the face of Jesus Christ. So let's go and look for the face of Jesus. Let's go and have a picture of Jesus. You can't have a picture of Jesus in the flesh. That's a revelation. Reveal his son in you, like he did with Paul. 
Once you understand your salvation is the work of God, is the operation of God, the Father, the Son, the Holy Ghost, the three in one working to save your soul, to give you the free gift of eternal life that it doesn't take back once it's given to you, because it takes you out of Adam and puts you into Christ. Slowly but surely we will come to the no to the light of the knowledge of the glory of God in the face of Jesus Christ. He's the answer, man. He's the answer. Got this psychology book. Seven steps to walk the Christian life successfully. Normally means having health and prosperity. <laughs> That's what I mean, successfully. Hey, Paul was sick. He prayed three times with whatever he had. The Lord Jesus said, no, my grace is sufficient for thee. To thee. Because my grace, my strength is perfect in, you know, weakness. When you're weak. Paul said, then, okay, fine, good. Then I rejoice, praise the Lord. <laughs> for God who commanded the light to shine out of darkness. Do we understand the power of these words? Father, give us understanding, eh? There was darkness up, upon the face of the, of, the, of the deep. The Spirit of God was moving. Darkness. Physical, spiritual, I don't know. The point is that God said, and God said, let that be light. Let me go there. Let me go there because my memory, I'm an old man. Let's see. This is so glorious. In the beginning, God created the heaven and the earth. And the earth was without form and void. And darkness was upon the face of the deep. And the Spirit of God moved upon the face of the waters. And God said, this is Christ speaking. The Word. The Father, the Word, the Holy Ghost, the three of one. And God said, you see, this is the Father who created. And then there is the Holy Ghost, the Spirit of God. Holy Ghost, Holy Spirit moving upon the face of the waters. And God said, let there be light. And there was light. And God saw the light. It was good. And God divided the light from the darkness. This book is divine. For God who commanded the light to shine out of darkness, shine in our hearts. To get the light of the knowledge of the glory of God in the face of Jesus Christ. But we have this treasure in earth and vessels. Our bodies are made of dust, earth. Even the so-called scientists tell us that the same uh, chemical substance, the elements, are in, in our flesh. You are iron deficient. Uh, you have uh, uh, deficient. You are lacking iron. So take this fill of iron. What, iron? Well, you know, why don't you eat this pan? It's made of steel. <laughs> no. But we have this treasure in earth and vessel that the excellence of the power may be of God and not of us. And there you go, mate. All the power, the power belongs to the Lord. <laughs> Notice the... Notice the expression, the excellency of the power may be of God and not of us. This treasure, what? Christ in us, of glory. Mind blowing, it makes me faint. But not like I give up, faint like, it's so much, Lord. <laughs> we are troubled on every side. Oh yes, Paul, we are yet not distressed. We are perplexed, but not in despair. Persecuted, but not forsaken. Cast down but not destroyed, always bearing about in the body the dying of the Lord Jesus. That's what we preach. That the life also of Jesus may be made manifest in our body. For we which live are always delivered unto death for Jesus' sake, that the life also of Jesus may be made manifest in our mortal flesh. Over and over and over says, Dead, reckon yourself to be dead indeed too. We Christ. With death to the Lord by the body of Christ. Oh, the grace of God. So then works in us. So then death works in us. But life in you. We have in the same spirit of faith, according as it's written. Spirit of faith. I believe and therefore has spoken. We also believe. 
and the Paul speak, knowing that he which raised up the Lord Jesus shall raise up also by Jesus and shall present us with you. Wow. For all things are for your sakes, that the abundant grace might through the thanksgiving of many redound to the glory of God. For the which cause, for which cause, the glory of God. I, I should be three hours every single verse here. For all things are for your sakes, that the abundant grace, the abundant grace, this is the gospel of Christ, this is the gospel, this is the word of truth, this is not Mickey Mouse magazine. For all things are for your sakes, that the abundant grace might through the thanksgiving of many redound to the glory of God. For which cause we faint not. Remember he said at the beginning? Remember he said, we faint not. And well, guess what? After all this consideration, revelation is received from the Lord, he said, Oh, for which cause we faint not, but though our outward man perish, ask me, Paul, I'm 75, I'm falling to pieces. <laughs> Yet the inward man, oh, this is important now. This is the new man, the inward man, is renewed day by day. For all that affliction, which is but for a moment, works for us a far more exceeding and eternal weight of glory. Wow! People are still debating, should I baptize in water by immersion or by sprinkling? Forget that. Come here, study this. For all other friction, which is but for a moment, works for us a far more exceeding and eternal weight of glory. Why we look not at the things which are seen, but the things which are not seen. Do you see God? No. You see Jesus? No. The Spirit? No. The angels? No. Even the devil? Do you see? No. For the things which are seen are temporal. Temporal means temporal, just for now. But the things which are not seen are eternal. Get this. Temporal. Eternal. My dear friend, have you received this glorious gospel? Because I knew if you have, you have eternal life. There's nothing you need to do. Just give glory to God. You should spontaneously. If you don't, it's fine. You're still safe. But isn't that great now that you can study the Word of God? Given it, it will have all men to be saved. So you get saved. Now study the Word of truth. And learn, learn. And say, this is my Lord. This is my Savior. This is my God. Not going around with the face of Jesus like, you know, you see, in the Catholic uh, holy images, we around with a rosary, wasting time in lighting up candles, praying to statues, or listening to your local Protestant, because, you know, we're Protestant. No, I'm not. <laughs> I don't protest at all. I'm a simple believer, a grace believer, saved by grace and kept by grace. And all the glory and praise and thanksgiving goes exclusively to the Lord in the beginning, in the middle, at the end. <sighs> Thank you, Father. We give you glory. If you haven't believed it yet, please do it. How did Christ die for us since according to the scriptures? He was buried, he rose again third day according to the scriptures. He was delivered for our Offenses was risen again for our justification. He gave himself for our sins. He might deliver us from this present evil world and that according to the will of God and our Father, to whom be glory forever and ever. Amen. Grace and peace to all. Grace and peace to all, really. Uh, no, as a formula. Grace and peace. I pray that you get saved. Amen.